It's been nearly three years since Kish Cash came out. What have you been doing? Have you that have a Paris Nicole style falling out? Uh, we've been uh, touring. Uh, we toured the Kish Cash album, and then uh, and then we um, we won a Grammy. We were doing big rock stages for the first time, yeah. which is like fifty thousand plus people. And then um, Glastonbury was at the end of the summer, and uh, yeah, and we rocked it, and you know, and Primal Scream came on before and said, "What do you want?" I saw Basement Jacks, and they went Basement Jacks. He went cocksuckers and threw his mic down and stormed off, <laughs> and, uh, which I think made him look very sad and sorry. If you could change one thing about London, what would you change? I would remove all clouds permanently. Some new transport system as well. Maybe if somehow we could all like some big vacuum thing. You know, like the when you play. Air hockey. Yeah, yeah. So actually, they had little strips of air shooting up. We could all jump on the strip and, and just blow around, you know. I don't think that's ever been used before. I think, that, yeah, I think that's a good idea. That, yeah. Well, I mean, Ken Livingston's meant to be forward thinking, so maybe that's what he needs. Get rid of all the transport and just let everyone float around a bit more. But tell me the, the new record. What, what should we expect from it? 14 tracks. Warm, colourful, imaginative, uh, other worlds all just colliding with each other. Uh, it's not, probably it, more groovy than the last album. It's probably yeah, right. more, it's warmer sounding than more, okay, more up than Kish Cash was. Electro. Kish Cash was yeah, probably yeah. a bit more abrasive. It's more maximalist yeah. and less minimalist than probably what's around out there. So it's a reaction to the uh, the cold electro sound. It's okay. actually warm and fulsome. Is there anybody in the future that you'd like to work with? Well, Grace Jones was one person we had on our list for this album and the last album, yeah. but her manager. Still can't find her apparently. And she runs off all over the place. She's a complete loon. Well, we were gonna um, hire a van and put some recording equipment in the back of the van. Because uh, does she live in England or she had a place in yeah, England? Yeah, she's around somewhere. She lives with some lord. And we were gonna park it outside yeah. the front door. And we thought if we go out the front door, it's then all she's got to do is come out the front door, jump in the back of the van, and just yeah. record a couple of verses for us. <laughs> and even if she hits us, we can uh, record that or something and get no, some essence of grace on our record. You know. I think she'd be up for anything. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. But you just need to get, get, get her field of view in the same direction, and then just pull her over somewhere. I think. Can you make anyone sound? Uh, Yoko Ono was a bit of a challenge. Oh yeah, that was. No disrespect to her because she's definitely a legend. Yeah. But, uh, but we had to try and get it use a tuner. It was definitely, you know, jazz tuning <laughs> that we had to kind of work around. Yeah, she didn't have much body to her voice either. So no body, no tune. It was a bit... Yeah. But it wasn't like really nice Arabic singing or anything. No. It was just... It was free from. <laughs> it's just like someone singing along. <laughs> Crazy Itch Radio, what sort of name is that? And what sort of name is that? Yeah, what's that all about? Uh, well, it's, it's a radio station because really it's... Each track is like flipping between different channels. The fact that we've got different styles and different feels to the songs, that's a way to make it all fit together. And the Crazy Itch Radio Station is a station from another galaxy that's looking down on Earth. And uh, Crazy Itch is the, uh, the motivation or the inspiration to do things, to live a life extraordinary rather than ordinary.